one. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September 11th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, that's me. Hey, and our guests today are Dread Pirate Higgs. Welcome. And the John Richards, welcome. So we got Canada and England represented here. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not, I'm sure. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about silly ways how people have died. Darwin Awards, Ignoramus Awards, on other sorts as we go into deeper delving on this wonderful topic of death. (laughs) Anyway, Lou, we're going to, before we get into the uh, meat and potatoes, let's have some pasta and throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Hicks for our weekly invocation. You betcha. <clears throat> God be me captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt waters. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth me bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness, for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking. For thou art with me, thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog, my goblet runneth over. Truly, past and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life, and I shall dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Amen. <laughs> Guys, I'm so glad we were able to meet up today, and it's good to see you again, Dread Pirate. It's Thank good you. to see your friend, Nicolet, as well. Nicolet, would you mind introducing yourself? Um, I'm Nicolette Dawn. I'm from Lethbridge, Alberta, and I'm just visiting Grand Forks for a couple days, and I'm off on holidays, going to go out to the island. going to be super fun. That's very nice. nice to meet everybody here. <laughs> nice. Wonderful having you on. Uh, tell me about your hat. It's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I actually got it from uh, the Halloween store, and... Uh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Not bad. You saw it. You're like, That's a nice one. one. She, yeah, she of course, one. personalized it to her own I did. particular I, taste. I added some extra feathers and yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. Very, very cool. Mm-hmm. Looks really great. Everyone who's listening to the radio, just imagine like a very wonderful pirate hat plus more wonderful stuff put on top of it. So it looks great. <laughs> yeah, feathers and bling and all kinds yeah, of things. Possibly. Got some rivers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Dread, how you been doing? Uh, pretty awesome, actually. I uh, was it was the last night or the night before the interview? It was the uh, day before, right? Yeah, it was the day yeah. before, yeah. Yeah. So actually, it was yeah, it was Friday, uh, which it was our past at. Um, I got a call from uh, someone at CTV News, which is a big news network here in Canada. Okay. Um, and uh, we did a session for television audiences on uh, my latest exploits with uh, ICBC and their um unwillingness to accommodate my religious expression has it already aired uh, what's that has it already aired do you have like a youtube link? yes i will i actually i i posted the link to it in the uh the messenger uh, what okay 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 i may have to when you have a chance check it out it's a two minute spot um but uh one of the really good things that came out of it was uh bobby henderson who is our prophet, the the one that introduced the world to um, mm-hmm. Pastafarianism, uh, wrote me a, a, an email uh, saying how asking how he could help. Um, so we've got mm-hmm. we've got backing from the big wig. Wow, mm-hmm. that is that is if not anything like imagine imagine doing something really nice as a Christian and then having Jesus give you an email and be like hey <laughs> exactly, that was pretty good right? what i can do yeah. to help you out i'm the prophet where i got the pope behind me you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm here to help out i'm just like yeah that's that should be the role of prophets in, in exactly forest, yes. right yeah pretty fantastic yeah. uh so keep up the keep up the cause for chaos and and same in the same capacity let me know whatever i can do to help let us know whatever we can I appreciate do. it yeah thank you 
John Richards, always good to see you. Uh, I know uh, recent times have been uh, challenging for a lot of English people, but uh, how have you been doing personally? Personally, I've been doing fine. Yeah, I had a very busy day yesterday, but I do want to mention the passing of our monarch. Right. Because she was, I mean, let's face it, nobody could have been playing the role of monarch better than she did. She was utterly gracious and noble and very engaging, seemingly, you know, not um, class conscious or race conscious or anything. And, and going about the world, making friends, you know, diplo diplomatically shaking hands mm -hmm. and not alienating anyone. Now, I mean, try doing that. It's not easy. And she right. was wonderful at it. Mm. she's going to be a hard act to follow 96 but, years yeah yeah but um the thing is of course with her passing so we also lose the head of our established church right. the anglican church because as you know we're not a secular country and right. neither's canada because canada's shares our queen we, we right. lend her out <laughs> and then there are four, 14 realms in the commonwealth the, the rest the other members of the commonwealth totaling i think 56 countries are not realms so she's not the head of them they are republics just republics within the commonwealth but sorry this is turning into a history lesson isn't it <laughs> <laughs> so what's so, going to happen to the anglican church who's going to well of, of course the particular head the, of, of course, um, the only thing that travels faster than light is the British sovereignty, because the instant she dies, Charles becomes king. Entangled uh, so he, entanglement. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. There is there is no passage of time between those two events. So, mm. yes. so he he has inherited that not only the crown but the position of head of the church. Oh. Interestingly, though, in the recent past, he expressed a wish not just to be the title defender of the faith, meaning the Anglican faith, but he wants to be, or he expressed the wish back then a few years ago, to, that he wants to be defender of all faiths. Oh, Interesting. my goodness. So we'll see how that plays out. It, I, well, it, that's going to be a hard one because he's not coming in a pastor, pastorarianism <laughs> as the head of our church. No, there you go. And of course, the Archbishop of Canterbury won't be supporting him, di oh, diluting his activities yeah, with other, imagine. yeah, supporting other faiths. And, so, and well, I know the uh, Queen didn't have political power. Like I know England has very much like separated the two. It is good to see the position of influence and power, like held by, in my opinion, just like a woman where it's just done so well with such dignity as an example of like, hey, when you have this much authority, when you have this much persuasion, this is how you carry yourself in a public eye to where like everyone can actually hold that to an esteem and set an yes. example for that. I felt like she yeah. had a really good impression on that. And if anything, yes. it was a very good contrast for a lot of the bad leaders we've had, even in our own yes. state, yes. or mostly men. Yes. It was just like, ah, uh, when these two people are shaking hands, you clearly have a good example and a bad example in the same room. Why can't yes. we have some of that? Yeah, you know? Separating politics yeah. from the head of state is such a good idea. Mm. And, Very true. And, and, and did, you, did you say that right? Separating the head of the church from the yeah, politics? Yeah, church, head of church. Yeah, yeah. Well, from the head of state, too, because yeah. she, she stands above politics. She's not in, engaged in party issues, you know? She just... She's right up there, ignoring all of that, and just she, she will not reveal her opinions ab mm. about issues which have been politicized. Uh, oh, he we, won't. Okay. We just got a comment on that from Alan Smithy. Uh, we're live on uh, Reddit chat. He says everything, or why reason why I really hate religion is that it's entirely political, and religion is just an excuse. Mm. Well said. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the root of all things that we hate is particularly politics. <laughs> Larry Rhodes, good to see you, and how you been? 
doing just fine. I'm going to have to go choke this bird. My, my daughter's got a bird sitting upstairs. Did not know where hear. this sentence is going. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All um, right. But uh, anyway, haven't had the bike out, been playing computer games and working, and that's about it. When you're 72, your activities are kind of restricted. Larry, when but, you have an accent like that, the Southern drawl accent, the low steady beat, and you throw out weird antidotes like i gotta go slaughter the chipmunks it's just like that could literally mean anything it's like is he working on his carburetor is he getting groceries what does you that got mean to, you got to be able to hear that bird upstairs i gotta hear spleen it. the skunks outside i'm like so okay i'm gonna have sure. to go put it in a room or something but He's choking the bird okay. <laughs> choke okay. the bird okay okay cool right. uh you, while larry goes choke the bird um uh <laughs> quick update for me hey listen uh things are going really well uh i feel like mm. i found a great balance between uh outdoors with friends and and work life and having fun with those guys and my coworkers. we have a good team we have a lot of good science uh happening we got a lot of clearances to buy a lot of new cool toys the stuff that we had that were broken in our lab is now working again. And I feel like I'm in a good place, which only gives me nothing but confidence. And that's the thing that I'm always worried about because whenever I have a lot of confidence, I tend to do stupid things. Thankfully, hopefully, thankfully, and both hopefully, they don't lead me to getting into bad situations where I can actually die or kill myself. And I want to highlight why that's important because there's a lot of times when people are operating on confidence and not doubt. And the main thing I always say is confidence is never on your side. Doubt's always on your side. Confidence is like, you can jump into that pit and fight that tiger. You're awesome. You can do it. Do it right now. I got your back. Whereas doubt is like, oh, my beer. Think... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doubt's my beer like, while hey. I show you this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's the Canadian spin. That's the Canadian spin. Oh, my beer, eh? And then oh, doubt sure. is always like, hey, don't, I don't think you should talk to this person. I don't think you can fight that tiger. I don't think you should drive that fast. I think there's cops around that corner. I think you should watch out. Maybe you should lose a little bit more weight. Like doubt may not always tell you what you want to hear, but it's always in support of you in the long term. And so I want to talk about some stories today about people who are operating on confidence, particularly and particularly in a in a in a in a lethal fashion, but also in a way where it should be aware of. The same mistakes can happen analogously to the world religion. And I wanted to bring up uh, a story that I presented to you guys a while back ago. Uh, this is a story that happened in 2009. It, it's still a shame when anyone does die horribly. Or it, I just want to make that a point. But I want to see something else to come of it, which is a learning lesson. Or uh, a, a meaningless death is one where no one ever learns anything from it. But I want to take this as an example of caution for everybody. But there was a guy named John Edwards Jones, uh, grew up in Utah as in the Mormon faith, and his family had a very interesting hobby of going into cave systems and spelunking down very, very tight corridors, mul multiple hundred feet underground with lights on their heads and just exploring cave systems together. And uh, unfortunately, on one of those trips, John Edwards or uh, John Edward Jones got stuck in a hole that was in an uncharted part of the cave system that he was in upside down he got caught upside down tried to free himself by going deeper into the hole got himself pinned and basically was upside down for a period of 28 hours that's enough time your body is not designed to be upside down your body and when i say design don't don't clip bait that like your body <laughs> is essentially inherently uh, created by the one true god what else can i say the one newly lord to be upright your your heart is constantly fighting gravity to push uh, blood up to your brain it's it's that's the way how your the the blood system works when you're upside down it's it's almost as if you are defeating the purpose of all the uh the the concept of blood pressure now you have blood draining into your head and you have no way of really forcing it back out because there's no systems in place there and as a result he ended up having so much blood drain into his head and away from his other extremities that he essentially died through uh, a strangulation. It's, it's in, and it's one of the worst ways to go. Uh, his family tried to drag him out of the of the the pit, but there wasn't any cranes or or, or systems that can go through the and, and uh, what is it the torturous path that he had climbed to get down there, and the entire time. He had his family come by and say, listen, we're going to get you out. We're going to pray for you. It's going to be okay. We're going to pray for you. And they sang hymns and they made a lot of prayers. 
None of it worked. And I can't imagine a more worse way to die than stuck at the bottom of a pit in a hole. But yeah. here's my analogy. Here's, a, here's my learning lesson. I would say that the pit was not chasing him. There's not a pit that like chases people. There's not a hole that chases people. And there's not a, uh, it wasn't like the pit suddenly like squeezed him down and trapped him. The pit was always there. He climbed into it, but it was his family and his upbringing that like made him feel okay with that. And in a lot of ways, when we're raised in a religious upbringing, we don't know we're in a pit until it's too late to get out for a lot of people. Like we're trapped in a system based on our environment, based on our upbringing, based on the authority figures that we have around us, that even when we realize we're stuck in a hole, we don't have the mechanics to get out on our own a lot of times. And one of the reasons why I think it's important that we make sure that we're, we, we let people know that there's atheists around them and that they're good people and that they're available to talk to if they have any questions is because of guys like this who might get caught in pits, both literally and metaphorically. And I also want to say like, hey, you know, <laughs> What a dangerous hobby, because if there's like a one in 1,000 chance you'll get stuck in a pit doing that, and you do it a thousand times, probability says you're going <laughs> to something that's going to happen. Anyway. Uh, and that time could come early in the thousand. Yeah. You have to do a thousand, and you'll exactly. never get me down there, ever. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I say, you know, try to find, you could have picked up this golf, you could have done a lot of other family activities, but it's the confidence of, listen, I have a God that loves me who will protect me no matter what. Nothing will ever bad happen to me. Of course, I can jump into this cave system and come back out. And of course, if something bad happens, I can pray my way out of it. I can't imagine a worse safety net than one of faith. That'd be uh, my my two cents. Dad or five, what do you got? On a lighter note, <laughs> uh, I, I was reading about this pastor who went fishing. Um, the pastor really has nothing to do with it, but it, he was a pastor. And uh, he, he did not a swim didn't wear a life jacket, went fishing, which is not good, not a good combination, but it's, his boat started sinking, and uh, it was sinking slow enough that he was able to wave and get help from other boaters, and they came over and helped him to the shore. Now, this is on, on the internet, so it's got to be true. Uh, it was actually on the Dar Darwin Award site, but uh, it wasn't good enough that he was on dry land and safe. He was worried about his boat. So he got he talked somebody else into taking him back to his boat. Uh, it was foundering in water. It was still upright, but it's foundering. And when he tried to step on it to get to it and tie it up, it turned over with him, and he went underwater. Couldn't wow. get out. He, mm. he didn't know how to swim and died. Mm. When you're on dry land, <laughs> at least get a life preserver or a stay there. Right. Don't go back to a sinking ship. Very true. I also say, if you got to let or my sister's in the Navy and I keep telling her, you need to learn how to swim. And she keeps saying, nah, I'm all right. I don't want to get my hair wet. I'm like, you're, you spend months and months at a time on a boat. And I don't mean that. I hope I didn't come off bad, but that's literally the thing she keeps telling me all the time. It's like, I hate getting my hair wet. It's a black people thing. It's not a sexist thing. It's just mm -hmm. a black people thing. We, it, our hairs are like sponges. Like when we're, when we're done, we can like squeeze it out. It takes forever to get our scalps dry. It just is what it is, but still. You're on a boat in the middle of like nothing. Learn how to swim. It might, it might help you in, in a long term if you're in the Navy. Absolutely. Right. Even the dog pathway. <laughs> Just learn how to float. You know, like there's a lot yeah. of things you could do. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I got another comment from Jackman31. Uh, Christians are known for many things. Common sense is not one of them. And I, anyway throwing that out <laughs> yeah you know, if they had that they wouldn't uh, believe in in supernatural stuff you would think but uh, uh, it's all depends how to how you were raised and concepts you were raised with sure 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 it's all it's it's not in in the same way how it was with like the cave system or it's it is not so much that religion is bad because it exists and it it traps people it's more of like you're never given an opportunity to realize that there was another option when you're born, if you're in a religious system. And because you never get the experience of knowing that there are other options and you realize you're in a pit and you realize that it's dangerous, you've already grown so accustomed to it and you have no way of getting out because you're already kind of stuck in it, that you're like, I might as well just, you know, keep digging down from here. Like you don't really have any other options, it, but you do. And that's why we do these shows. And it's why we, we speak up. It's why Dread gets on CCTV 
in Canada and continues to stir the pot at his local driver's license board and, and be the ire of all the local governments around his area. Drive Pirate, speaking of which, do you have an example of someone potentially making a terrible mistake? Yes, and uh, certainly a winner of the Darwin Award. Uh, this, okay. this happened in 2006. 2006. Where, uh, th a 35-year-old uh, pastor was giving a sermon to the congregation, and uh, he was getting them so worked up, uh, but they were nevertheless surprised to learn that um, <clears throat> he was going to demonstrate his faith by walking across the estuary where a ferry carries people from one side of the estuary to the other, a 20 minute ferry ride. Wait, so he's literally going to walk across water? This is his faith is going to carry him walking on water across the estuary. So after the sermon, of course, out he goes to the pier or wherever, where the, the ferry docks. Right. And off he goes, but he does not know how to swim. Oh, oh no. Man. And he promptly drowns before okay. his congregation, who I'm sure were praying for him. Right. <laughs> this was back in uh, 2006 in Libreville. Uh, right. Gab I don't know where Gabon is, but... Uh, it's so, uh, West Africa on the coast. Yeah, it's not, I, th I thought it might be Africa. Thing. But, yeah, that's that's my story. Stories like that make me realize, you know, and, and remind me that it's not always a con religion. It's, right. it's done by people who genuinely believe that they are doing the right things, that they are talking to the right God, that they are sending the right message, and they full-heartedly have a terrible system of figuring out what is true things from what is false things. And as a, a result, failed epistemology, as it were. Exactly. And but nothing but confidence. And that's why they mm -hmm. jump up. Larry, what do you got? Well, I wonder to re um, recognize Eric for coming in. Welcome, Eric. Hello. 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 Also, um, along the same lines of the, the preacher who walked on water, there's an article from 2021 about a pastor in Zambia who had himself buried alive. Oh because no! He wanted, he wanted to be able to. He he had faith that he could resurrect, like yeah. Jesus did, and of course it didn't work out that way. So did he like put a stone thing in front of him or anything like that? Oh, I don't know. There's a video on it, but I haven't watched the video. But um, he mm. did not survive the the burial. Again, you know, go on ahead, John Richards. Well, there's quite a few events of pastors in the U.S. and elsewhere. Mm. who reckoned they could handle a snake. And oh, oh, no. Why are you teasing us? Yes, I was going <laughs> to. Absolutely. Is this down a... here in this neck of the woods. So yeah. if you guys didn't know, like before the post show, John Richards always makes it a habit of like boasting about the prowess of like Mac. And I let him do it because it's an American. <laughs> company. It's like you should have an Apple. Why are you having so many problems connecting? Just turn it mm. on. Like it's an American company. I'll let it slide. And mm. I the the things that are hard to stomach is when he's just when we're already on the ropes and he's just like, you Americans do weird things. Like, <laughs> I'm not the one doing it, but like America is a weird place. If you haven't been, if you haven't been here, it's, it's kind of weird, but yeah, we do have a lot of active, even in this state, snake handling pastors who have yeah, the snakes yeah. at home or in the congregation and they'll release them as they do the sermon. And the idea is for anyone who's foreign to this concept, they are so confident that these snakes won't bite them because they have God on their side that they yeah. just let them flow freely. They stick their hands in them. They handle them. They pass them out to each other because they have the shield of faith on their side. I never <clears> remember <throat> if it's poisonous snakes, but I imagine. Oh, it is. A of snakes. Yeah. Yeah. They're 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 that's, that's the real challenge there. Right? That's, yeah. the, that's the true test of faith. Yeah. You see, the anybody other thing... that gets bitten and dies uh -huh. didn't have sufficient faith. Right. That's the which of... reinforces that's the congregation. That's at the end and of Matthew, see... isn't it? You see, the other thing that Americans do is trample all over your story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to claim manifest destiny on it. You know, it just is what it yeah. is. It That's is. Funny. Yeah. Boudreaux, we're talking about Darwin Awards. Do you uh, have any that stick in your mind about uh, what may have happened to someone? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, like like someone I know or, or, no, or just no. stories? No. Yeah. Uh, 
some Eric. of them that died before yeah. they were able to have children. We right, can give right. you, How about we go to break and then we can yeah. give you some yeah, time? It's about that. that time, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Stay tuned for the second half on our WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a minute to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, we're in our 20th year, have over a thousand members, and we meet in person uh, every Tuesday uh, down at the Knoxville's, down in the old Knoxville's old city, excuse me, at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables, or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom meeting, and you can join us there. Uh, for the link, you'll need to email us though, at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can write to letschatse at gmail.com. Uh, if you can't, I'm um, sorry, you can find us on Facebook, meetup.com, knoxvilleatheist.org, which is their website, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Star, star one. one star one that's right well i'm at where you gonna pick up hey we're gonna go t- into some quick listener comments from our first half of the show we're live on reddit chat uh mr tottenham says uh we're concerning dr wells's spelunking story my thing is that now many christians are getting more educated about science and trying to justify christianity to themselves so they're saying that even stories like the snake story and adam and eve are just a story that's how Christianity is evolving to survive in this world. But people are so brainwashed that there's no way out, just like they're trapped in a pit. Uh, we got more comments on snakes. I can love I, K9. I, oh, go for it. Go ahead, John Richards. Well, I was, I was going to contribute to that. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> because if, if Christians are trying to cuddle up to science, mm. what they need to do is to explain to us how their claims can be investigated. Mm-hmm. Because that's what science does. Right. It investigates claims. It mm-hmm. tests them to see if they're falsifiable. And yeah. if they can't do that, they're never going to get backed by science. Right, right. Like the, the two pillars of science is the two main things that we care about in science are comporting with reality and falsifiability. If you don't have those two things, it's not an, a realm of science. So to present a model of how to understand how reality works, that is no way concerned with how reality actually operates or is interested in being tested or falsified is inherently a useless, a useless methodology. And the it fact that un- people operate on it, it's terrible. It's unscientific. Exactly. To its very core. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what gets me is that if if you find something like a chariot wheel at the bottom of the Red Sea, you know, the, <laughs> the believers will point to it and say, look, that proves the Bible's true because, you know, the Red Sea was parted and the Egypt's, Egyptians came through and it came back. Down. Not like that any particular ship might carry a, a chariot wheel right. to sail on the other side or anything like that and go down accidentally. But it also proves that souls are real, heavens are real, you know, Jesus was real, resurrected, everything in the Bible was true if you find one scientific artifact that may point uh to a story in the bible that that's what gets me Mm. we got a comment respond to uh jonathan richard's comments so uh you're best off considering all religious texts as either early philosophy texts of very early humans who had only a very limited understanding of the world compared to us not as an actual historical uh retelling of things but, you know, even that, it's it's the same thing where it's like, I am totally fine if we worship Spider-Man as long as we realize that Spider-Man's a work of fiction, right? Yeah. Like, if you want to just really, really, really like something, I'm fine with you really, really liking something if you want to do that. But don't make it the code of how we realize the oh. truth of things and inhibit our capability of understanding things better other than the thing that you really, really right. like. Yeah. That's the yep. problem with Christianity what, or yep. and religions in general. Yep. John Richards. And as, as for early philosophy, well, early philosophers thought that you could solve problems by clever thinking. 
Mm -hmm. Later, later philosophers, however, back in the Renaissance time, which spanned, I don't know, about 1400 to about 1700, quite a long period, and more recently in the Enlightenment, they realized that even the careful thinking processes that philosophy goes through comes up with an outcome that needs to be compared against the cosmos to see whether it's congruent or not. Yes, of course. Natural philosophy, they called it. Yep. We call it science. It was before science. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, well, got a, man, you're inspiring a lot of comments. <laughs> <laughs> one, one last one from uh, Seamus Siegel. Nothing in the Bible. Oh, I'm sorry. It's pronounced Seamus. Seamus the Siegel. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That helps out a lot. Okay, Seamus the Siegel says nothing in the Bible is supposed to make sense out of context. It is a part of a series of philosophy texts written by humans whose entire universe was a few square kilometers in the Middle East. Great for studying the history of human thinking, like Plato, but ultimately complete nonsense from a practical point of view. Yes. Dredd, what do you think? Uh, well, I would say that the use of the word philosophy hmm. uh, in to call those texts any kind of philosophy is is not philosophy. Um, it was it was just a, a you know basically it was just an understanding, right? Hmm. It was a theology, not hmm. a philosophy. They weren't trying to investigate the world. They were just trying to tell everybody that God did it, and this is the way you should worship him. It's the book a book of theology, not a philosophy. They're just making yeah. declarations and yeah. by point of authority forcing people yeah. to follow. It's not like yeah. inviting. God, God rules by fiat, right? He doesn't make you think about things. Uh, you're just supposed to do as you're told. That's it. Mm. Yeah. I, I want to know, and this is really a big question. I want to know why Seamus Seagull it's not Seamus Shagel. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a deep question. That's a good yes. one. That's a philosophy profound. question. <laughs> really <laughs> profound. Larry, Larry, did you guys saw your hand up? What was up? Well, I was just going to comment on what um, John was saying about philosophical thought uh, being flawed. I mean, even even what was it? The guy who said, uh, I think they're or Descartes. Even yeah. he got the the one truth uh, right, but after that he seemed to go off the rails himself, uh, thinking that um, supernatural things were real and that spirits were real and and a God was real. Um, he he uh, had no real reason to believe that or to suggest it as truth, but he did anyway. But the only one true philosophical thought that we have i think is that i think therefore i am nice i like it and seamus has oh, okay go ahead dread well i was just going to say that that statement could could cogito ergo sum was what established dualism the idea that uh, there was a homunculus inside the head and that it was the thing observing the stuff that the body uh you know has senses for input um so it in its own way yeah. a bit of a failed right. epistemology because it established mm -hmm. the cartesian theater which mm -hmm. uh, many argue is clearly not the case am i allowed to throw out my own favorite latin saying or in philosophy it's quando omni flunkis morti i don't know if canadians can appreciate that it's when all else fails play dead from the possible <laughs> I just took my bearware course, so I'm, I'm fully cognizant of that one. But but I, I should just point out Eric Green hasn't had a chance to say anything. Absolutely. Eric, <laughs> Seamus, thank you so thank much you for all the everybody. comments. Seamus, thank you so much for all the comments. Everyone else, thank you for, for uh texting in and feel free to leave more comments. We'll go through them during lulls in the show. Eric Green, people yeah. from confidence. You have an example yeah. of that you want to share with us? I, I do, but uh, I did want to, I don't know, I assume you guys didn't cover this. Uh, a thought I've had about the Darwin Awards for many years is we we have a flaw in it, in that, uh, yes, you, you know, you can't give it to someone if they've had kids, otherwise it's honorable mention. What if they've donated to a sperm bank? Do we have to check that? Uh, mm -hmm. That's a good point. Good critical anyway. thinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I actually just, just uh, stumbled upon a very interesting one, which ties into snakes. Yeah. Um, so in 97, a guy in Pennsylvania 
uh, reach his hand into his friend's uh, tank uh, to pet, I guess, or touch a cobra, a poisonous cobra snake. Oh, no. And uh, he's, hey, do you want to go to the hospital? He's like, no, I'm a man. I can handle it. So instead, he went to a pub and had a beer and died an hour hour later. (laughs) Yeah, well, that that proves that beer is bad for you. Yeah, that's right. Also, machoism is bad. Beer and snake bites don't go together. Yeah. (laughs) Right, right. And again, when I hear things like that, it's like, we have cultivated a society where something like that could happen when we didn't have to have that be the case. And so in my head, dying from a cobra bite that you in other any capacity in a more educated environment, you would never have been exposed to sort of sets up the argument that this environment is generating needless harm. And my problem with harm is that there are some harm that's needed. Like if I go to the doctor and they make an incision in my body, that's harmful, but it's useful. It can be, it can be in a way towards getting, you know, around more significant problems. But when you just walk down the street and punch me in the face with no provocation or anything like that, that's needless punishment. That's needless harm. And I feel like when you take a child and you raise them in an environment where they can dig themselves down into a cave and get stuck in a hole 200 feet for no reason whatsoever, <laughs> or, uh, have save themselves from a sinking ship but then jump back into the water to die anyway or try to walk across a channel because they've been told so many times that people can walk on water if they if they can if they have enough faith or get bit by a snake when they didn't have to whether they're in america and you're being teased by a person from the uk or a cobra and you're from you know the great state of kentucky like it just it seems to me like we are generating causes of needless harm by this confidence that we infuse through a religious society and we should probably get rid of it that's that's my two cents john richards what do you think well on, on the subject of needless harm i think you've just got yourselves into trouble with the radio station because putting cobra and beer together in a sentence we've got a cobra beer over here it's oh, very dear. popular <laughs> in indian restaurants oh no <laughs> You've been inadvertently advertising. <laughs> if you ever got, if you ever get puns like that, feel free to just interrupt me and, and get it out. So that <laughs> be like, hey, Ty, I got to just get this out. It's like I'm totally <laughs> you have pun privilege, is what I'll say. Uh, go- uh, there you go. Comment from Dostiers. He says the real sin. Oh, so we, before we were talking about the Garden of Eden uh, and yep. snakes, uh, the real sin didn't come from listening to a snake. The sin is not the act of disobedience or the snake's supposed trickery, but humans becoming educated. An educated populace is a danger to rulers. If you want to know whether your leaders or governors are working in your interests or rulers are working in their own, how they treat education is a fairly good guide. It is a hard rule over an educated people, but easier to govern on their behalf when they're uneducated. Absolutely and superstitious. I mean, that's why they burned uh, Tinsdale at the stake for uh, translating um, the, the Latin Bible. Bible. Yeah, yeah, translating it into uh, uh, you know English that people could actually read. It took it took the power of the of the uh, clergy to interpret the Bible um, from their hands and and dispersed it amongst the populace. Right. 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 For it. right. And, mm-hmm. and for a long time after Gutenberg, you could, it was illegal to own a copy of the Bible. Yeah. It was illegal to own a copy of the Bible. Yeah, I had no idea that was. Well, I mean, I'm not surprised by it, but I, I was, I'm kind of <clears> shocked <throat> by that. I thought it would be like a, a paywall, but the fact that you would own a Bible and that'd be illegal was like, what are you going to read that? It's like, what do you think this whole machine was for? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we get um, back to those days? How can yeah, we make that thing again? Like we I was going to make one interesting note uh, just quickly on that is that uh, in Canada, uh, the BC or the Humanist Association in Canada um, has successfully eliminated the practice of schools passing out Gidgeon Bibles. So there you oh, go. Well nice. done. Yeah, very good. good. Very, very good. good. Small yeah. bits of progress. And again, if That's you are, this. if you're very good, very good. If you are, if you are, um, if you are an atheist, I say, like, as we make these uh, these substantial, you know, steps in progress, the best thing you can do to a Christian isn't necessarily argue and break down their philosophy or even like try to break down their epistemologies in, 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 a, in a straightforward way. It's letting them know that you're an atheist 
And then letting them realize, oh my gosh, all these people who are around me, who I always assume were Christian, who thought the same way I think I do, who may believe the same God I think I do, aren't. And I kind of like them. And the next time a Christian tells me, well, people who aren't Christian are going to hell, I'm going to think of my good friend. I'm going to think of my friend Dredd or my friend Larry and be like, wait a second, they're going to hell? Can I talk to them and see if I can get into Christian? Like, but there, there's no problem with them. They're they're totally fine. Why doesn't my God like this completely normal mm-hmm. person who doesn't just happen to believe in the God I do? Yeah. That's Eric. in my head, that's the best way to get through it. What Eric, what do you think? Uh, Eric, March 23rd. Uh March 23rd. I don't know if anyone else has participated in it over the years, but it's it's a day that people are encouraged to come out as an atheist. Yep. Yeah. So I usually try to find someone that that I don't think knows. Right. And I try to tell them every year. Atheist um, day. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Yes. But you're right. I, I think getting that out is, is important. It is. Mm. And it's the sort of thing that becomes easier the more you do it. Like the first time you're actually kind of my, when I first let someone knew I was an atheist, I was nervous. I almost was hiding it like it was a bad thing. But then I realized as soon as I said that at work, other people were like, yeah, I'm atheist too. I was like, I had no idea. That I was surrounded by so many people who also didn't believe in God. I was under the impression that I was the only one. That's a bad impression to have. You want to make sure that you break that mold too. Uh, Dred. Uh, Well, I was just going to say on September 19th of each year, uh, that's the opportunity for Pastafarians to come out uh, because it happens to be International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Nice. Yes. Yes. And Dred, by the way, there are a lot of disc golfers who are Christian. I always wear my uh, noodle hat. When I go out nice. and play, I represent that pretty proudly. Just letting you awesome. know. Awesome, awesome. Very cool. And that hat came from Eric, so thank you, Eric. For yeah, that. there you go. That's a Christmas right. gift. Yeah. All right, John Richards. Well, I was going to say, do you know how crazy you'd be viewed if you went around here in England telling people that you're an atheist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, privileged society there. Yeah, it's yeah. not that. Well, you say that now. Let's make sure Charles the Third doesn't change that, right? Mm, yeah mm-hmm. okay. I'm, also, I'm concerned i'm concerned about uh charles because he's been very uh vocal about his anti-science stand oh, on no. many many subjects wow uh, yeah he, he you know, has supported homo homeopathy what's it called Home- homeopathy that's yeah. the one homeopathy he, he promotes that as a legitimate well, he, uh, he, he has in the past but that's that is in the past and in fact we've recently decided that the nhs has no business paying for homeopathic treatments so i think he's he's lost that one oh good but, but uh, he does claim that he knows the difference between being a prince and being a monarch okay you can't have opinions if you're a monarch mm-hmm. or you Got can't it. have public opinions yeah. One one last topic from before we uh, close up. I wanted to give Seamus one last chance to 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 have a a chance to have a rebuttal on what he was saying. Seamus the Siegel says, "I would argue that it is a philosophy. Philosophies are d- made to answer questions that humans would have. Why do we suffer so much when nobody else does? Why us? Why are we being punished and looking for logical answers? So what else could it be? Which leads to the why? Well, we haven't." done anything so it must be our ancestors who messed up right and then what could have done what could that be that our ancestors have done well as our knowledge and awareness is now a curse it seems only logical that it's somehow related to the punishment that must be it we stole knowledge and we're being punished for it ironically that's that is the story of the garden of Eden, basically uh so so the reason i i maintain that it's not a philosophy is because philosophy is using reason to examine the uh, workings of the universe. Theology is just a just so story as I think Eric or uh, R- uh, John Richards pointed out. Mm. It, it's not, it, it, it has, you know, theology really doesn't have any explanatory power. Right. It's just a, They're just a bunch of a collection of just so stories that give people a sense of connection to their community, to their culture, and to define themselves as outside of any other culture. Yeah, like fairy tales and fables aren't philosophy. They are essentially stories. They may have a learning lesson in them. They may have a parallel to reality, but they're not there to make you use the same mechanics that you would in philosophy. Eric, what do you think? Can I just go devil's advocate for a little bit? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. I'm entirely sure I agree with this just to get it out there that, you know, we are talking about a time before reason and a lot of these scientific method and all the rest of it. So it could have been it could have been as close as we could have gotten to philosophy. Mm. before we were kind of uh 
given the tools that we we know now. So maybe it just it was it was what philosophy would have been, you know, given what they had to deal with. I, I don't like know. if you had a caveman being like, "I want <laughs> two rocks," and the caveman only brings one rock, he's like, "That's not enough rocks." You don't know what math is. Mathematics right, right. established brands. Like, I can count. Let me show you how this works. It's like, that's right. math. It may not be uh, as we appreciate it now, but like, I could see that. I can see that okay. argument, Eric. Larry, what do you think? Yeah, I was just going to agree with Dredd in that a book of answers is not philosophy. Mm -hmm. Right. A book of answers, exactly. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and also in defense of, of reason and how far back it's gone, like certainly Thales and, uh, uh, the early Greeks, right up to, you know, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle. Thales was, of course, a, a couple of hundred years even before that. Um, but it, it did mark a significant change in the way you think about the world. So applying principles of reason and argument in order to discern one thing from another and uh, try to find sound reasons for uh, the way things work, as opposed to the book of answers, as you say. Okay. John Richards. Yeah, I wanted to trip back to the Gutenberg Bible story, you know, about printing, because it's no good having a copy of the Bible if it's the wrong version. <laughs> I, reported, <laughs> uh, I reported last week in the Global Atheist News Show that I do every week about a pastor who had a book burning. You know, right. he had this big right. galvanized uh, dustbin with a gas burner pumping flame into it. And he got the kids to throw in all the Bibles that weren't KJV, because there's only one. Right. Mm. <laughs> that he approves of, anyway. Uh, uh, and even, I, even that's a translation. Yeah, yeah of course, right. I do want to I want to truly crystallize uh, Dredd and Eric's point in that I I once had a, a philosophy teacher and I came into that class as a Christian. I was back when I was an undergrad and it took a while for me to realize that the answers in the back of the book, the philosophy book that we had was not philosophy. Philosophy was the process that I was using to get to those answers. Mm -hmm. And like the best way that it snapped in my head was I also had a math class. And I had the answers in the back of the book for math that I could use for like studying. But I realized that mathematics is not a list of answers. Mathematics is the process of trying to like use these abstract concepts and come out to one correct answer. Like that is you. math. In the same way, yeah. morality is like understanding the consequences of my action and trying to make the best way to generate well-being in a sense, right? Or like understand yeah. different systems of acting and interacting with other people. It's not do not steal do not covet your neighbor's wife. Do not, it's like, mm -hmm. that's not morality. So like philosophy and uh, authoritarian story or a fairy tale or a really, really nice fable is a different thing than philosophy in its own right. And I can really respect that and appreciate it. Even if it's the building blocks up to philosophy, it's not philosophy until you actually start making me use those mechanics. Right. Or at least that's how it, what I mean when I use it. Yeah, this is a case where it's not of a common ancestors, mm -hmm. right? It, it wasn't one thing transitioning into another. It was these two things actually coexisting independent of one another in, to a certain extent. Mm. Because certainly the Greeks were ensconced in their own um, poly, uh, polytheistic uh, mythology, right? So um, those things were, I think, kind of separate. It was so, like a evolution. I see. Yeah. I'm Richards, what do you got? I was going to say, as a maths teacher would say, show your workings. Right. It's not the result that matters. Show your work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would also argue that you can win a Darwin Award even if you hadn't had kids, because what Eric said makes a lot of sense. Like you could totally donate sperm. <laughs> There's a lot of things you could just say, hey, I never had sexual relationships with that woman. And guys, we're at the end of the show. I want to do a round table where we can plug things that you should check out. I would say, hey, thank you so much for leaving comments on this Reddit chat. This is actually really cool. Thank you guys so much for leaving comments on the show. Uh Excellent. feel free to Oh, feel free to also leave comments on our YouTube channel. We'll go over them. I guarantee you we will. Um, and Dada's Trader Room, thank you for always being a stalwart. We appreciate your comments. Seamus the Seagull, sorry for getting your words, uh, your name mixed up, but uh, we appreciate all the feedback that you've had on the show too. Dread Pirate Higgs, anything that you would recommend we check out? I know there's a news clip of you going around. What's going on, man? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to uh, shout out to uh, Z28, who's my live uh, uh, attending my live stream today. Mm -hmm. um yes 
not this, not tomorrow, but the following Monday is Talk Like a Pirate Day. Ooh, and nice. it is going to be the first Pastafarian wedding in Canada, which I will be conducting uh, because I am a BC marriage commissioner. And the legal bits are required, of course, but around the legal bits are the trappings. And the trappings can be whatever a couple wishes. And so we're going to do a, a live stream Pastafarian wedding first in Canada. Uh, yes, there's a, a thing floating around on CTV News. It, you can find it online. Just Google CTV Vancouver Pastafarian. Nice. And, uh, yeah, you'll see me uh, up there sh talking the merits of Pastafarianism and, and how the battle needs to be fought and won. I also stream my stuff on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E, live at 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on uh, uh, on Sundays. And, nice. and then also I do the Global Atheist News Review at 11 a.m. Yep, I'll be Sunday there with you. Also, Boudreaux, anything that you recommend we check out before next week? Um, I, I want to leave everyone with a, with a thought to think about, and, and it is that when are we going to drop the, the 20 when we're referring to a year? You know, we say 2022, 2020. When are we going to just start saying, you know, 24, 26, like we do 97, 98? Oh. And, and like, when's that flip going to happen where we stop oh, saying the 20? Oh, uh, I like that. I like that. There's a good thought. Come to ponder. Yeah. yeah. That's 22 was a good year. Yeah. yeah. 22. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder better than 20. <laughs> I guess we're waiting for all the centurions. Is that the right word for it to like to go away? Like people are still passing away, even in the night. Oh, uh, yes. I remember the, the last new generation. Time. May That's already be using it. Yeah, 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 yeah. John Richards, I know you got a lot of stuff to plug. I'm I'm holding, I'm bracing on. What do you got? <laughs> well, I had a very busy day yesterday. I was driven up to Birmingham to attend the National Secular Society's uh, Islam and Secular Community, or Secular, what was the title of it? Something like that, event. And I got to speak, and I spoke for about three minutes, and there's a clip of that on Freethought Channel. Then I got back in time to host Freethought Hour with an ID, not a proponent, but somebody who's a science scientist who wants to try and get ideas to look critically at their claims and to apply scientific methods to, to try design. and justify them yeah right yeah it's it's such a waste of time on <laughs> what else yes. can I, what can I say yes. like, yes. I was thinking I could make Sprite by mixing lemon juice and lime juice together I'm like dude there's more ingredients than that and the ingredients yeah. are on the can itself just like read the cans you're fine it's like I, yeah. I just want to spend my life figuring this out poor guy anything how about the debate that you had a while back ago anything good with that uh, any feedback uh, which uh, which debate the was this? debate that you had with you and Tercia with the pastor who wanted you to punish him more. Oh right, yes, that, that was last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he um he wanted to prove to us that Christianity was the thing, right? And you can see it; it's on the Free Thought Channel. And uh, he, I think he failed. Oh but no, he's still on this guy. Oh geez. Oh he well, that never hate. happens. That never happens. Oh well. Anyway, <laughs> Larry Rhodes, shows all yours. Anything? Oh, no, he's on mute. See, this is what happens when you don't know what I, atheism I is all buttons. about. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, uh, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter 5 or Digital Free Thought. Uh, I have a book on Amazon called Atheism, What's It All About? So if you're looking for specifics on the reasoning behind it, that might be for you. If you have questions for the show, thank you, Dred. If you have questions for the show, you can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com, and we'll answer them in future shows. Um, you can find this show on podcast everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week, every yep. Wednesday night in Knoxville. Anyway, take care. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Man, this was great. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks.